Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing Death of a Cad. This is the second novel in the Hamish Big Beth series. It's written by MC Beaton. This is a reread for me, but I think I enjoyed this novel more the second time around. I'm not sure why, maybe I just picked up on some of the nuances that I didn't pick up on the first read, and I appreciated the Hamish character a bit more this time, I think. I have reviewed book one again of this series. Check it out on my channel. I'll be doing videos on each book in this series as well as I reread each one. If you don't want to miss out on those, subscribe to my channel. Let's continue with what I thought of Death of a Cat. Well, the plot of this novel is much better than book one. I still think that book one is the weakest novel in this series and I didn't change my mind after rereading it. The plot of this novel is kind of similar to book one in some ways though. So in book one we had a lot of people attending a fishing school. In this novel we have a lot of people going to the Helberton Smarts. They're going there because they want to meet Priscilla's new fiance. He's a playwright and he's a newly famous playwright. And just like book one, all the guests are varied. But as Hyacinth Bouquet would say, they're of the right socio-economic background. They're all quite well off, but they've all got the same motive, being there because they want to meet Priscilla's new fiance. But what we do learn about them is that some have secrets, some are quite rude, some don't like each other, and some may not be as well off as they want us to think. The introduction to the characters is quite long in this novel. It takes quite a lot of time to get to that first murder, so that was a bit of an issue for me because even in Cozy Mysteries, you want the novel to move along a bit quickly. And I found that this novel, the start was quite slow. We get a lot of background detail on some of the characters. And some of that background detail I don't think is important to the novel. One of the more interesting things that happens during this long introduction is that Priscilla invites Hamish to a party at her parents house it's kind of like a cocktail party they're throwing the parents find out and they uninvite hamish but he doesn't get the message so he still turns up and that makes us some good humor a bit of comedy during that party we get to overhear certain things the guests are saying or hamish does anyway and he picks up on a few you know conflicts maybe or a bit of tension that's going on between certain characters that's quite interesting and i think some of those key discussions and, and that party is important for later on in the novel. It's not long after the party until our first body shows up. It's Captain Bartlett and he's the cad. So he's a bit of a scoundrel, you know, always chasing the ladies, always leaving, you know, one lady for another one. Um, he's also a bit of a grifter, he kind of steals things a lot and he was always trying to get money by nefarious means. So he's not an overall nice person. And we also see that when he drinks a bit, he gets loud and obnoxious, so he's not nice in that way either. And he puts a lot of the characters offside, so there's a lot of suspects. Almost everybody who's staying at that Hamilton Smites is a suspect. People think that Hamish can't solve or investigate this by himself, so they bring in outside help. And one of those people is Blair. And in the first novel, we'll introduce to Blair briefly, but in this novel we get to see more of his character, and we see more of the way in that he treats Hamish badly, and that he doesn't like Hamish, or doesn't respect him, and he suspects it's suicide and deems it so. So everybody thinks that Captain Bartlett committed suicide. Hamish is not so certain about that, so he goes and investigates on the sly, and he's caught doing it, and he thinks it's a murder. He's so sure, in fact, that he even convinces Blair of the fact, and Blair doesn't want to, but he has to reopen the case. Much to Blair's displeasure, Somebody higher up comes in to investigate. That's Detective Chief Superintendent Chalmers. Chalmers takes a shine to Hamish. Thinks he's quite intelligent, quite resourceful, and asks Hamish kind of to be his right-hand man during the investigation. Blair's pushed to the side a bit, and we know that's going to antagonise Blair a lot, and that's going to colour Blair's opinion of Hamish even more. During the investigation, we do of course find out more secrets about the suspects, but one of the things that I liked about this novel 
is that we get more of the villagers. We see a bit more of certain villagers in this novel, and we didn't get that so much in the first novel. And novel two is the start of that happening. And I found that added just so much more fun and energy to this novel and made it a bit more pleasurable to read. The thing I really liked about this novel is that there are a lot of suspects. They all had motives. They all could have killed Bartlett. That's what made it such a fun read, because until that last chapter, you don't know who's guilty. Well, we have to start with Hamish, of course, because he's our main character. You get much more of a sense of Hamish as a character in this novel than you did in book one. He's more well-rounded, there's more to him, he's more interesting, there's so much more to like about Hamish in this novel. What I really enjoyed about Hamish in this novel is just the fact that even though he's investigating a case, he takes time out also to help the village in certain things, and in this novel he's helping them out with a fate they're having, sort of a crofter's fate. And I found that really enjoyable because it just shows a different side to him as a person, and also you get to see more of the village as well, and the way all the villagers all get on with each other and do those important things to support each other. That is a good thing to see about Hamish and also the rest of the village. Priscilla. Again, we see more of Priscilla in this novel as well, and she's more well-rounded. But we see different sides of Priscilla, and I didn't really notice this in the first read, I don't think. Priscilla's a bit naive when it comes to certain things about life. It's like she's been sheltered too much by her parents, and certain things are almost alien to her. And in a way, even her emotional responses to things aren't what you'd expect from somebody that age. I find that interesting because I didn't pick up on that in my first read of this novel, and it just makes me think that this character is more well-rounded than I may have originally thought. So in that way, MC Beaton has done a really good job of crafting this character. Then we have Henry, who's Priscilla's fiancé, and he's the playwright, and he just becomes famous during this novel, you know, he's starting to get his fame. I like this character because it just shows us, I guess, almost a true sense of somebody who's finding fame for the first time, who's been looking for it for so long, and sometimes how it goes to their head, and that's what this character's all about. I guess that's what MCB then was trying to give us in this character, and that's a really strong feeling we get. One of the characters in the village that really stood out in this novel is Mrs. Wellington, the Reverend's wife. There are a few scenes with her where she really stands out. We see her being bossy, but organised. You know, organising everyone in the village to get things done, but get things done her way. And she's got really strong opinions. And she always seems to turn up at certain times when Hamish doesn't want her to. And finding out that Hamish is sneaking off doing something, that's quite fun as well. Because Hamish can't seem to do anything in the village without somebody finding out. So Mrs. Wellington seems to be one of the main characters from the village that's given more substance in this novel. Death of a Cat is definitely a better novel than the first novel in the series for many reasons. One of the key reasons is we're given more of the characters. The characters are more well-rounded, more well-formed, and that's a really vital part of this series. I mean, it's a cosy mystery. We need to know more about the characters in a cosy mystery, or it's just not going to work. People are going to just drop off and not read it. So in that way, it really worked. The mystery element was really strong in this novel, and there are a lot of suspects, and it keeps you guessing. So in that respect, it works as well. The thing that kind of let me down a little bit was that it took too long for the first murder to happen. It's just too much build up. I rate this a 3.5 out of 5. Definitely stronger than book one. Still not the best in the series, but quite a strong novel, and when you read this, it does make you want to read on in the series. I'll be recording more videos as I read each novel in this series. If you don't want to miss out on them, subscribe to my channel.